Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. It is going to be a beautiful day here in Southern Missouri. So we thought we would bring the plants outside for the very first time today. Now they're only gonna be out for a little bit because these guys haven't been under the direct sun yet and we need to do it gradually. That process is called hardening off. So today we're gonna bring them out here just for a little bit, water them while we're out here. And then after lunch, we'll bring them back into the sprout house. But isn't it great to see these little lettuce plants starting to come up. We've got broccoli and cauliflower, all kinds of things to bring out today. We're excited to show you. And then we've got some work to do down at the farm. Now, even though we have grow lights in our sprout house for all of these plants, you guys, nothing beats the sun. The sun is perfect for plants and grow lights. They're good enough to get them started, but these plants will do a lot better outside. But because these plants have never seen uh, the real sunlight, if we put them out here for too long at a time, they actually can get burned. Uh, not burned from the heat of the day, but burned from just the direct sunlight. So it's important uh, when hardening off to just do this as a gradual process. The first day we'll have them out here for an hour, then two hours, three hours, until they can withstand the sun all day long. When we have all the plants out here like this too, it's easier for us to water because we can just bring the hose over and a watering wand and just give them a little bit of water all at once and it'll just take just a couple of minutes. Well, these guys are all set to be out here for just a little bit. We need to head down to the farm, so we'll catch up with you there. We're down at the farm and we have a pretty, well, not really a big project to do today, but an important project to do today. Something that we've been trying to figure out a solution for really since we bought this farm. This is our hay barn behind us. This is where we store all of our hay. At the beginning of winter, this is completely full. In fact, this year we even had a couple bales that wouldn't fit. I think five bales more than what would fit in here. So we've gone through quite a bit of hay already this winter. And one thing we've learned between feeding hay last winter and this winter is that there's not a great system here at this farm for getting hay bales in and out of the, out of the barn without the cows right there wanting to eat. So what we've been doing this winter is we take out about five or six bales at a time. We put them off in another area and then we at least only have to get into the hay barn every few weeks or every probably two weeks. That's been working okay, but it's still not an ideal situation. Ideally, what I'd like to do is be able to leave the bales right in here until we're ready to feed. So today we're gonna to come, we're gonna do a project that's gonna help us with that. Currently, the front of this hay barn just really has these I don't know, fence panels almost in front of the, in front of the uh, openings here. We've thought about putting gates up here, which would make things a lot easier because right now each one of these is just kind of wired into place with some pieces of old wire. The problem is the person who built this barn didn't make any of these openings. Actually, all of the openings are different sizes, first of all. 
and none of them are kind of a standard size. They're just kind of, you know, nine feet, three inches, nine feet, seven inches. So they're not a size that I can really get gates for. And I'm afraid trying to make gates, first of all, right now with the price of lumber is gonna be outrageous. And second of all, to make something this long that's also strong enough for the cows, if they rub up against them or something, I'm just not confident that that would work. So ultimately what we wanna do is be able to eliminate these and just leave the front of the barn open. And the only way to be able to do that is to come up with a way to keep the cows out of this area completely. So right now the cattle have access to this area by coming through this big open area right here. So today what we're going to do is we're gonna run an electric fence from the corner of that building over there to the corner of the hay barn over here. Then we're gonna run all the way around the hay barn with an insulated wire because I still want them to have access to all the area around the back side of the hay barn. And then let's take a walk over on this side. I'll show you the other way that they can get into this area. The other way they can get to the front of the hay barn right now is to come through this kind of alleyway right here between these two buildings, between the hay barn on this side and this old building over here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to install an electric gate across this area. Uh, we're gonna go from the hay barn over to this pole here. And we're gonna install an electric gate across here so that we can still get through with tractors and things to feed hay, uh, whatever we need to do, but that the cattle will only be able to get this far. So that's our plan. Uh, I'm hoping we can get this all done in the next couple hours because there is another project that we wanna work on later in the day today. We're just gonna have to see how the timing works out. So let's get started building this new electric fence. So our fence today, we're gonna to be building out of electric poly braid. Uh, the stuff I really like is called uh, Super 9 Poly Braid from PowerFlex. PowerFlex is actually kind of a local company to us here. It's just about a half hour away from us, uh, but you can order from them online. We're in no way affiliated with them, but I do like them and I do like that they're a local company. So that's good. We can go right to their shop and pick up supplies as we need them. So we're gonna be using the Poly Braid 9 today. Uh, which means there's nine strands of metal within the rope itself. We're also going to be using some of these uh, one inch fiberglass poles for our corners and our beginning and end. And we're gonna be using half inch fiberglass poles for our line poles. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install one of these uh, close to the building where we wanna start. And then we're gonna run just a piece of string from there over to the corner of the hay barn so we can go in a nice straight line and try to make this look as good as we can. I think we're gonna do two strands of the wire. I think that's all it's gonna take to keep the cattle out. Uh, if there's a problem after that, we can always add a third strand, but I really don't think that's gonna be necessary. All right, now we're gonna run our line between the two buildings. All right, on to putting in our line posts. Now for our line posts, again, we're using these uh, fiberglass poles, they're half inch poles. And when you buy a pack of these fiberglass poles, pretty much from any company. They're gonna come with a little thing like this that goes on the top. That's what you can use to actually hit so you, that you don't uh, hurt the top of the pole. For insulators, we're gonna be using the same thing you've seen me use in other videos, which are these spring insulators. They just slide down over the pole and then you can adjust the height by pushing on the spring. So I'm gonna put these. Now these cows, this, these cattle in this area have never been exposed to electric wire that I know of. 
So uh, I'm gonna put more poles than I probably normally would. I think I'm gonna go about every five big steps where normally I would probably go like every 10, but I want this to be a pretty good fence for them just in case they test it. So we're gonna go pound these poles in and then we'll start putting up our wire. Now with this fence, we're gonna be doing two wires of the poly braid, uh, just to make sure that they know what the deal is. We're gonna put one of them at about um, 36 inches. And one at about 18 inches or halfway down. We're not gonna measure, we're just gonna wing it. All right, for adding our wire, uh, another reason I really like this poly braid is it's just so easy to work with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here at our first pole, and I'm gonna just tie this on here. I like to tie, I don't know what the name is for these knots. I call it a fishing knot, I don't know. I'm sure it's got a real name, but it's how I tie fishing hooks on. I like that knot because as you pull, it gets tighter and tighter. All right, so we got our first piece on. We'll put it at about 18 inches. We can adjust it later. Let's go to the first line pole and I'll show you how those insulators work. So here's our spring insulator on the pole. Basically, what all this does is you take your wire, you're gonna push it through like that, and then you're gonna turn this spring. And now that wire is locked between the pole and that insulator. That's why I really like these. It's just a really simple, fast way to do this. We're gonna just go down the line and do this on all of the poles and we'll get to the other end and I'll show you how we'll go back up and over. We're just gonna leave a long tail to go up and over. I think in this situation, that's just gonna be easier. So I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna leave quite a bit here. We're gonna pull this tight. I put a mark on the pole about the same height as where we were along the line. I'm gonna pull this as tight as I want it. Wrap it around a few times here. I'm just going to tie this off here. And now what I like to do is use a zip tie to just go around. This will help hold everything tight. It'll help it not slip quite as much on the pole. So I just put a zip tie on there. Pull that tight. And now we can start on our piece going back the other way. And what I'm gonna do is I'll then use this as a jumper to go up to the next piece.
All right, so that's the second strand up. Got that zip tied on there nice and tight. We'll go back and we'll tie our jumper wire across and take down our pink string here. And then we're ready to move on to the next step in this process. Next thing we're going to do is install our gate across this alleyway. We're going to drive another uh, pole here, the same type of fiberglass pole. And then we're going to be using these gate, these electrified springs. Basically this will run from the pole over to the fence on the other side. This handle is just solid plastic, so it'll be insulated. So we don't want to electrify the fence on the other side. But these springs will go across. We're going to put up two of these. Not only is this electrified, but because it's so big, it'll be kind of a good um, physical barrier for the cows as well. They'll be able to see this, and hopefully they'll stay away. All right, we're going to start by putting this pole in the ground. Now that our pole is in, I've drilled a hole at the 18 inch and 36 inch mark. That's the height that we want our gates. And I'm gonna just use some old pieces of scrap wire here. And that's what we're gonna to use to put the gate onto the pole. So I'm gonna push these through. Just wire that like that. Nothing fancy, that's for sure. It's one thing I like about electric fences. I feel like, you know, as long as you achieve the goal that it works, that's all you really need to be doing. All right, and we're just gonna do the same thing with this one down here on the bottom. That's all there really is to attaching those to the pole. Let's go ahead and try to put these across our opening and see how they look. Okay, let's try it out. You think that's a good height? I think so. I think they're gonna be good. All right. I don't think they're gonna test those much. They might once, but that's probably it. Right. The last thing that we need to do before we can actually hook power up to this fence is we need to run basically a jumper from this side of the building over to the other side. Typically jumpers that I've done have been short, but this is going to be like 80 feet. So I bought a hundred foot roll of insulated wire. So we can run this along the side of the barn and along the back over to that other corner and this won't be electrified at all. This is just, almost looks like coax cable, but it's just a solid piece of wire on the inside. You can bury this, and I could go across the front of the barn and bury this underground, but there's much rain as we get and how it kind of settles here and riding on the tractor. I just don't really want to do that here, so I think it'll be better to run this along the outside of the barn. So we're going to start Basically, this end needs to attach to the fence over here, and then the other end of this needs to attach to those gates we just put up. So I'm going to start by, we're going to zip tie this in place here. And then we're just going to basically unroll this and attach to the barn as we go. We've made it over to the other side of the barn with our insulated wire. I'm just going to take this end, I've stripped the insulation off this end. We're going to attach it here to the loop on our gate. I've already run a jumper wire between our two gates as well. And so I'll just connect that like that. So everything is touching and connected. So the last thing to do is hook up the energizer. Uh, I've showed you guys how to do that many times, so I'm going to go and get that done, and then we'll plug the power in, and we'll see how much voltage we're getting on both pieces of fence.
I've got the Energizer all hooked up. We've got it connected to the fence. I haven't tested yet to see how much voltage we're getting through these wires. So let's take our, our fence tester here and see what we're actually getting. On that one we're getting, well, my tester goes up to 8,000 volts, so we're getting at least 8,000 volts. Same on the bottom one. So that is awesome. Let's go over and test out those gates. And if that's, if those are live, we're done with this project for today. 8,000, 8,000. You guys better stay away. You have to stay on that side now. All right, that wraps up this project for today. Let's walk out to the orchard. We have something to show you guys out there. Well, there was another project that we wanted to get done today, but we are running out of time and we're not going to be able to do that today. Uh, one of our daughters has a concert tonight, so we need to wrap up our work day. But I do want to tell you what we are going to be doing because we're pretty excited about it. Now, I am standing in the orchard area, and around our orchard and garden area, we have a chicken moat. And it's really just kind of a lane all around our orchard area where the chickens uh, just, that's their run. Last year, they didn't have a lot of shade. So we put up these cattle panels and made these trellises in four different areas. And we planted vining plants in these buckets. Well, it didn't end up working out very well for us. The plants didn't grow fast enough. We didn't water them well enough. So this year we wanna do something different and we wanna do something more permanent. Last year we got lots of suggestions from many of you saying, you should plant grapevines. So this year we're planting grapevines. We're not gonna be using the buckets. We're gonna plant them right in the ground. We're gonna be planting three different kinds of grapes. We're gonna be planting four seedless Concord grapes, which we're really excited about. And we're gonna be planting two each of these uh, Reliance grapes and the Niagara grapes. It will be fun because each one of these arches is going to have a, you know, a separate variety. So we'll have Concord grapes on two of them actually, and then one the Reliance and one the Niagara. It's going to be really fun to see them grow and over the, you know, course of the next couple of years produce grapes. It's going to be a good time and it's going to hopefully provide some really great shade for the chickens. Well, you guys, thank you so much for spending the day with us today on the farm. Uh, we're so happy that you've decided to join us. If you're enjoying our videos, we sure hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you go. Don't forget that is always the absolute best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just by sharing our videos with others that you think will like them. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.